And if you take the system of dollar hegemony, you know, the, there are essentially two, two foundations. What it means is U.S. military power on the one hand, but also equally importantly, US, uh, uh, the U.S. dollar system. And if we look a little bit more closely at it, let's just count the the variety in practically every major respect, the dollar system has been not good for the third world, not good for the vast majority of countries in the world that are not Western, that do not have a place in the G7 where they can coordinate macroeconomic policy and make sure that US allies don't get too badly burned by the US dollar system. Although they have been badly burned by it as well, as we saw in 2008, Europe outside the United States, Europe, uh, including the U UK in this instance, was the chief uh, victim of the 2008 financial crisis, which I like to call the North Atlantic financial crisis. But let's let's look at the third world. First of all, the dollar system systematically undervalues the currencies of the third world. And when you undervalue a currency, what you're doing is you're undervaluing the resources and the labor of those countries. Precisely, this is the mechanism by which the West has managed to get uh, access to the resources and the labor of these countries cheaply. And that also means that the, that the rest of the world has to sell their resources for a song and to work doubly hard, triply hard in, in order to sell, you know, they, are, they, they have to send a massive volume of goods, uh, uh, export a massive volume of goods to Western countries in order to earn Western hard currencies, including the dollar, because their money is systematically undervalued in relation to this. So that there's always been a big discrepancy between the volume of exports and the value of exports, which of course is uh, artificially lowered by the bad exchange rate. Secondly, the uh, dollar financial system has given the world nothing but a series of crises after crises, a great deal of volatility. You know, an international medium of currency ought to have a stable value, but the dollar's value keeps fluctuating. Um, another problem and a large part of the volatility and the tendency to crisis comes from the fact that, you know, whereas a proper monetary system should be based on a sort of a, a balanced environment, the dollar systematically has required imbalances, the chief among them, of course, being the vast U.S. current account deficits, which have uh, uh, which have the rest of the world has to finance them, but also the imbalances that are created by the U.S. Uh, uh, dollar system dollar uh, centered financial system, which has been on the one hand creating vast amounts of unsustainable dollar debt, uh, indebting households, indebting businesses and indebting governments around the world. And on the other hand, blowing up asset bubbles so that uh, 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 U.S. financial institutions and high net worth individuals can make a killing with the uh, uh, inflation of asset values. But this, of course, only leads to the crash of these uh, or the bursting of these bubbles. And this has created more problems. Further, the third world is told that the U.S. has a very sophisticated financial system. It's great. It's going to provide you with the capital you sorely need for development. But of course, in reality, the U.S. focused financial system offers the opposite of that because capital for productive investment, which indeed the third world and the rest of the world really need, it needs to be stable long-term capital that is able to invest for a long period in, in infrastructure projects, in projects that have long gestation periods, but eventually are very important and good for the economy. But this is not the sort of capital that the U.S. financial system offers. Instead, the U.S. financial system offers short-term capital that only goes to inflate the value of existing assets rather than investing productively in the creation of new goods and services. So the rest of the world is told, you know, lift your capital account restrictions, allow free capital flows, and you will get the capital you want. In fact, what the third world gets is the opposite of that, the capital they don't want. Hot money that comes stampeding in when these investors who are not particularly knowledgeable think things are good, and hot money that stampedes out at the slightest sign of a problem, thanks to equally ignorant investors, leaving behind uh, a financial crises, credit crises, currency crises, and of course, economic crises. Um, a couple of other points that one should also add to this. Number one, this system, particularly these debt crisis, third world debt crisis onwards, has 
enforced a system of debtor responsibility, completely ignoring that any credit relationship has two relatively equal parts. And if things go sour, if things go wrong, if a debt cannot be paid, both debtor and creditor are co-responsible for the problem. Instead, all the, uh, 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 the the weight of adjustment, the weight of repayment, etc., has been on the debtors. And as you know, this is the chief mechanism by which so much money is being drained out of debtor countries, which are the vast majority of countries in the third world, and goes into the coffers of the rich countries. And finally, one final point, given that this system has been so awful, Naturally, countries have wanted to leave it. And what has the U.S. done historically uh, 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 to, to countries that have wanted to leave it? It has essentially waged war against them. Think of Saddam Hussein. Think of Muammar Gaddafi. What was crucial about these two leaders? It was the fact that one of their key projects in each case was a project to leave the dollar system and uh, 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 try to create an alternative to the dollar system. And this is why they were essentially deposed killed uh, in gruesome ways uh, in the case of Gaddafi and uh, and of course their countries have been left uh, uh, essentially prey to all sorts of uh, uh, military and uh, political financial and economic instability so this is not a system and so naturally finally now the rest of the world has alternatives and the United States can't even wage a war to force the third world back to the dollar system.